Okay, guys, this is going to be part two of the unit five review. Let's go and get started. Uh, this is page F. To continue the phenotypic or to, to figure the phenotypic ratio, count the number of individuals with either the dominant or recessive phenotype for both traits. Then that ratio would be something like four to four to four to four or nine to three to three to one. All right. So let's do some dihybrid crosses here. If a woman who is a non PTC uh, taster, recessive, with heterozygous hitchhiker's thumb. So here's the female. She's homozygous recessive for the taster, and she's heterozygous for hitchhiker's thumb. She has children with a man who is heterozygous for the taster and has straight thumbs. What is the probability of them each having a what is the probability of them having each of the following types of children? Fill in the Punnett square and the uh, blanks. All right, so we need to figure out the genotypes. So I'm going to go ahead and write them again in there. The mother is homozygous recessive, heterozygous, and the father is heterozygous, homozygous recessive. Okay, so we can go ahead and put in the uh, alleles for the gametes. And this just might take a minute. Let's go ahead and run them in. There's the first row. Okay, how many will, will have PTC, taster, and hitchhiker's thumb? So we need to find individuals that have both the dominant T and a dominant H. So it looks like we're going to have one dominant T and dominant H. Two, three, four, I think that's it. So we have four out of 16, which is 0.25. How many will have PTC taster and straight thumbs? So we need dominant T and both recessive H's. So dominant T and two recessive H's. Here, 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 and there. Again, looks like it's four out of 16. I think I'm noticing a trend here. Oops. Uh, Non-PTC taster and hitchhiker's thumb. So it's gonna be two recessive T's and a dominant H. One, two, three, four. So once again, four out of 16, 0.25. And without even looking, I know the other one is four out of 16, 0.25. What is the phenotypic ratio? One to one to one to one. You could say four to four to four to four. You can reduce that if you wanted to. All right, let's move on. Number two, if a woman has no hair on her mid digit and is homozygous recessive, or excuse me, homozygous attached earlobes, so for the hair in the mid digit, she's little m, little m. And she is homozygous dominant for the earlobes. Uh, she has children with a man who has hair on his mid digit and has attached earlobes. He's heterozygous for both traits. What is the probability of them having each of the following types of children? All right, let's fill them in. So, I'm 
There's the first parent. All right, here we go. Oop, that should be a big, I hate using letters where the same, where they look the same. All right, there, that took long enough. Okay, how many have hair and attached ear lobes? So we need a dominant M and a dominant E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 16, that's gonna be 0 0.5, 50%. How many have hair and not attached ear lobes? So we need a dominant M and two, recess, and two recessive E's. We don't have that, zero out of 16. 0.0%. How about hairless and attached earlobes? So we need two recessive M's and at least a dominant E. That's going to be the other half, 8 out of 16.5, and that means the other is going to be 0, 0.0. So the phenotypic ratio is going to be 8 to 0 to 8 to 0. Okay, last one. John Doe and Jane Doe, one have children, are thinking about having their children's hands might look. What would their children look like if they are both heterozygous for straight pinky and hitchhiker's thumb? Okay, what are they used for the alleles for pinky? Looks like P, so they're both heterozygous for P. And I believe the thumb is E, right? So I can tell you this one. Here's a little trick. Anytime both parents are heterozygous for both traits, it is going to be a nine to three to three to one ratio every single time. This one is going to be dominant, dominant. This one is going to be dominant, recessive. This one is going to be recessive, dominant. And this one is going to be recessive, recessive. So dominant, dominant, that would be 9 out of 16, which is 0 0.5625. Straight pinky and straight thumbs, that is going to be 3 out of 16, which is 0 0.1875. 3 out of 16 for bend pinky and hitchhiker's thumb, which is 0.1875. And bend pinky straight thumbs is going to be 1 out of 16, which is 0 0.0625. That's going to be 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. All right. And that is all for page F. Let's move on to G. So give me a second to get that set up. Whoops. Wrong button. Okay, well, it looks like we have some more dihybrid crosses, at least one more here. John Doe and Jane Doe want to have children and are thinking about how their children's hairline and tongues will turn out. They are both circus performers and want their children to follow in their footsteps. Their circus only accepts people with a widow's peak and who can roll their tongues. What would their children look like if John is heterozygous for both widow's peak and tongue rolling? And Jane is homozygous dominant for widow's peak and heterozygous for rolling tongue. Okay, so I already just removed the page that has the key. So it does not matter what alleles we use. So let's just say that um, looks like widow's peak is dominant. So we'll say a dominant A is widow's peak recessive A is a straight hairline. And for B, 
Uh, let's see. If you can roll your tongue, that's dominant. If you cannot roll your tongue, that's recessive. Pretty sure that's how it's going to be. Okay, so let's figure this out. What would their children look like? What would their children look like if John is heterozygous for both? All right, so there's John and. Dan, uh, Dane, what, Don and Dane, gee, whatever. Dane is homozygous dominant for Widow's Peak and heterozygous for tongue rolling. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and put it to it. All right, so how many will have both dominant traits? We need to find how many boxes have a dominant A and a dominant B. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve out of sixteen, which is point seven five. How about widow's peak and tongue, non-tongue roller? So it's going to be a dominant A, no dominant Bs. Um, dominant A, no dominant Bs. One, two, three, four. That's it, four. Four out of 16. So it's going to be 0 0.25. The rest are zero, zero. The ratio is going to be um, 12 to four to zero to zero. You could say three to one to zero to zero. What are the chances of the child being able to join the circus? Let's see. Um, what did they say? The they are performers and want their children to follow the footsteps. The circus only accepts people with a widow's peak and can roll their tongues. So widow's peak and can roll their tongues, 75% uh, chance. All right, let's continue. This problem will involve both a test cross and a dihybrid Punnett square. You are a pigeon breeder. In order to make the most money as a pigeon breeder, you must sell mainly checkered winged red feather pigeons. Luckily for you, checkered wings and red feathers are dominant to um, plain wings and brown feathers. So it's gonna be pretty important. So let's write that down. I'm gonna put A for checkered, little a for plain, B for red, uh, where's, what's the other color? Brown. All right, we have our key. Good. Um, <clears throat> to breed as many checkered winged red feathered pigeons as possible. So you need as many dominant dominant as possible. You need to breed homozygous checkered winged red feathered pigeons with each other because all the offspring will be checkered winged red feathered pigeons. You know you have a female homozygous checkered winged red feathered pigeon. You bred her yourself. She is so beautiful that she has won prizes in several pigeon beauty contests. You recently purchased a male that has checkered wings and red feather from a shady pigeon dealer who claimed it was homozygous. Before you breed this uh, male with your prize winning female, you wanna be sure that it is homozygous for both traits. Describe how you will be able to tell the genotype for both traits of your pigeon in Gen 1. 
in one generation. So what you should do is you should cross this shady male with a female that is definitely homozygous recessive because I don't want this male touching my female that's a, uh, a prize pigeon. So if I have a um, individual that is a female that is homozygous recessive for both traits, so she's like this, and I cross it with this male pigeon, Okay, if 100% of the offspring has dominant traits, then that male is legit. But if there's anything, if there is any percentage of the offspring that shows a recessive trait, that means that that male is heterozygous because he must be carrying a, a recessive allele as well. So you would have to do a test cross by crossing the male pigeon in question with a female that is homozygous recessive. Illustrate the probable outcomes if your pigeon is homozygous for both traits. So with this, you would say, your, my female over here is definitely homozygous dominant. If the male is in fact homozygous dominant, it, this is really easy, guys. 100% of the offspring is going to be just like the parents. There's no other option. There's no other possibility. Okay? All right. That was page G. Let's move on to page H. Okay. Gen uh, genetics Punnett square practice. Most genetic traits have a stronger dominant allele and a weaker recessive allele. In an individual with a heterozygous genotype, the dominant allele shows up in the offspring and the recessive allele gets covered up and doesn't show. We will call this uh, complete dominance. However, some alleles don't completely dominate others. In fact, some heterozygous genotypes allow both alleles to partially show by blending together how they are expressed. This is called incomplete dominance. Other heterozygous genotypes will other heterozygous genotypes allow both alleles to be completely expressed at the same time, like spots or stripes. This is called codominance. Examples of each are listed below. Write what each type would be if they are heterozygous. So we have complete dominance. If a red and a white flower crossbred resulting in 100% heterozygous, what phenotype would be seen according to the rules of complete dominance? Um, they would all be red. So let's write that down. They would all be red. If a homozygous red and a homozygous white were crossed, resulting in 100% heterozygous, what phenotypes would be seen if it was incomplete dominance? Pink. And if it was codominance, uh, you have red and pink. So the flowers would have, or excuse me, red and white. The flowers would have areas of red and white. All right, snapdragons are incompletely dominant for color. They have phenotypes red, pink, or white. The red flowers are homozygous dominant, the white flowers are homozygous recessive, and the pink flowers are heterozygous. Give the genotypes for each of the phenotypes using the letters big R, little r for alleles. So we have a red snapdragon, homozygous dominant, a pink snapdragon, heterozygous, and a white snapdragon, homozygous recessive. All right, let's do the crosses. So we have pink and pink, heterozygous, cross with heterozygous, Homozygous dominant red, heterozygous pink, heterozygous pink, homozygous recessive white. So genotypes, um, we have 25%, 50%, 25%. Phenotypes, 25% red, 50% pink, 25% white. How about red and white? Homozygous red, homozygous white. Genotype. 100% pink phenotype, or excuse me, 100% heterozygous and 100% pink. And then pink and white, there's the pink, there's the white. Genotypes, we have 50% heterozygous, 50% homozygous recessive. We have 50% pink, 50% white. All right, moving on. Let's go to page I.
Uh, in horses, some of the genes for hair color are incompletely dominant. Genotypes are as follows. Brown horses are homozygous dominant. White horses are homozygous recessive. And a heterozygous genotype creates a yellowish tanned, tannish colored horse with a white mane and tail called palomino. Show the genetic crosses between the following horses and record the genotypic and phenotypic percentages. So brown and white. Homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. Looks like we have 100% heterozygous, 100% palomino. 100% heterozygous, 100% palomino. Brown and palomino, so it's homozygous dominant crossed with heterozygous. Looks like we have 50-50. 50% uh, homozygous dominant, 50% heterozygous. For phenotype, 50% brown, 50% palomino. And if we have palomino and palomino, so we have 25% homozygous dominant, 50% heterozygous, and 25% homozygous recessive. So we have 25, 50, 25, homozygous dominant, heterozygous, homozygous recessive. For phenotype, 25% brown, 50% palomino, 25% white. Can palominos be considered a purebred line of horses? No, they are heterozygous. That's not pure. Another name for heterozygous is a hybrid. They're not pure. Which two colors of horse would you want to breed if you wanted to produce the maximum number of palominos in the shortest amount of time? I would want to breed a brown with a white. That will give me 100% palomino. Okay, keep on moving. In smileys, eye shape can be starred, um, homozygous S, circled, homozygous C, or circle with a star, heterozygous. Write the genotypes for the following pictured phenotypes. Oh, no, my mistake. Circular, starred, circle star. Show the cross between a star eyed and a circle eyed. What are the phenotypes of the offspring? 50% um, circle. 50% circle star. What are the genotypes? 50% homozygous dominant, or excuse me, homozygous um, circle, and then 50% heterozygous. Show the cross between a star circle and a circle. I just did that. Did I mess up? Yes, I did. I've got to go back because I messed up. There, that's better. It's still 50-50. All right, here we go. Same ones. How, how many offspring are circle-eyed? Um, two. How many are circle-star-eyed? Two. Show the cross between two circle-star-eyed. How many of the offspring are circle-eyed? One. Um, circle-starred? Two. How many star eyed? One. Okay. That is page I. Let's keep going. Let's go to page J. Okay. Write the genotype for the following, or write the genotype for each person based on the description. So this is blood typing, guys. Be sure that you um, use the proper alleles and don't just put A's and B's. You have to have I's and, and um, superscript A's, okay? So homozygous B allele. So homozygous B there. Homozygous A, type O, type A that had a O parent. Type AB. Blood that blood can be donated to anyone. Can only get blood from a O donor. 
can only get blood from an O donor, that would be O. All right, pretend that Brad Pitt is homozygous for the type B allele. And Angelina Jolie, oh, this was made when they were married. They're divorced now. Pretend that Brad Pitt is homozygous for the type B allele. So here's Brad. And Angelina Jolie's type O. What are the possibilities of their blood types? So they're all going to be the same. Their children are going to be heterozygous O. What are the possible blood types of their baby, or excuse me, heterozygous B? So you don't have to say heterozygous B, but the blood type is going to be type B. Complete the Punnett square that shows all the following, all the possible blood types for the offspring produced by a O mother and a type A B father. All right. So we have type A right there. Oops. Yeah, type A there, type B there, and type B there. So A and B are the possible. Miss Essie is type A, Mr. Essie is type O. They have three children named Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Mark is type O, Matthew is type A, and Luke is type AB. Based on this information, Mr. Essie must have the blank genotype. Miss Essie must have the genotype blank because blank has blood type blank. Luke cannot be the child of these parents because neither parent has the allele. So we know Luke is not one of their children. So I'm going to go ahead and ignore Luke. Um, Mark is type O. So in order for Mark to be type O, both parents must have a recessive allele. Um, Miss Essie is type A. Mr. Essie is type O. So we got all that figured out. Miss Essie must have the genotype. Here we go. Um, she is heterozygous. Miss, uh, no, wait, Miss Essie. Yeah, she's uh, Mr. Essie. Okay, excuse me. Mr. Essie is going to be uh, homozygous recessive. Miss Essie. is going to have heterozygous A because blank has the blood type blank. Because, what's his name? Mark has blood type O. Luke cannot be the child of these parents because neither parent has the B allele. Okay, two parents think their baby will switch to the hospital. It's 1968, so DNA fingerprinting tech is, does not exist yet. The mother has type O, the father has type AB, and the baby has type B. Okay, so here's one parent, here's the other parent. Mother's genotype, mother has type O, father's genotype AB, Baby's genotype can either be heterozygous A or heterozygous B. The Punnett square shows all the possible genotypes for the children produced by this couple. Was the baby switch? So the baby has, uh, what was it? The baby has type B. Sure. No, it wasn't theirs. That uh, it says sure that can be their baby. There's a fifty percent chance. All right, that was page J. Let's keep going. Page K. Two other parents think their baby was switched to the hospital. Amy, the mother, has type A. Linville, the father, has type B. And Priscilla has the blood type AB. Okay, so let's make sure I'm sharing this screen with you guys. Good. Um, two parents think blood type A. Okay, so Mother has to either be homozygous A or heterozygous A. Father must be homozygous B or heterozygous B. 
the baby's genotype is AB. Punda squares show the baby's genotype is a possibility. Could the baby actually be theirs? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it, of course. You don't, need, you don't need to do a Punda square for that. Um, based on the information in this table, which men could not be the father of the baby? All right. So here's the, here's the thing, guys. If both parents are homozygous dominant, then the baby's only chance is to be um, AB. So in this event, if we have homozygous dominant crossed with homozygous dominant, that's going to result in 100% chance AB. Okay? If it's homozygous dominant crossed with heterozygous, it's going to be, let's see here, um, let me think of the cross. We got A, O, B, B, A, B, B, O, A, B, B, O. Um, there's 50% A, 50% O. And if the roles were reversed, where we're hetero and homo dominant, um, It would be 50% AB, 50% A. And I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say B, guys. Excuse me. And then if they were hetero, hetero, it would be 25% AB, 25% A, 25% B, 25% O. Okay? Um, so yeah, Priscilla, the baby is type AB blood. Let's see here. Based on the information in this table, which man cannot be the father of the baby? All right. The father. So if the father was type O, you couldn't have an AB child. So he cannot be the father, the mailman. Um, let's see, the butcher could be the father because he could pass on his uh, B allele and mom could pass on her recessive. So that is possible. The waiter, type A. Nope, he cannot because where did, where would the baby get the B allele from? And the cable guy. Well, the cable guy is B. So yeah, that could work. So the, the mailman and the waiter cannot be the father. The sister of the mom above also had issues with finding out who the father of the baby was. She had the state take a blood test of potential fathers. Based on the information in this table, why was the baby taken away from taken away by the state after the test. So the mother is type O. The baby is type AB. Um, the bartender is type O. So he cannot be the father. That wouldn't work. The guy at the club, he's AB. That wouldn't work. Cab driver is type A. There's nowhere to get the B. The flight attendant is type B. Where the A come from? The reason they took it away because she is not the mother. In none of those combinations could the, the baby be AB. So she is not the mother. All right, I'm going to stop the my class is about to start. So I'm going to post this page and I will do L, M, N, and O after school. And I'll post that around probably uh, four o'clock.